Hi right, friends, welcome back to another episode of Generation Tech. My name is Alan. In our last episode, we went through a detailed look at how Palpatine's permanent wartime economy eventually derailed the stability of the galactic economy and led to an increase in unemployment, poverty, and eventually rebellion. But originally, in the Legends novel Outbound Flight by Timothy Zahn, there was a point to Palpatine's massive buildup of the Imperial Navy. It wasn't just there to suppress dissidents and rebels. You see, a large fleet of aliens known as the Yuzang Bong had just left their own galaxy and had been ravaged by a terrible war between sentient beings and AI machines. Now, they were slowly making their way through the dark, empty void in between galaxies and were due to arrive in the Star's Galaxy somewhere around 25 ABY. Once they reached the outer barrier of the galaxy, they would begin an invasion so devastating and brutal that all other conflicts in Star Wars history will seem tame in comparison. Now, in the decades leading up to this invasion, the Yuzang Bong had set out several parties of scouts to kind of gather more intel so they can figure out how to plan their invasion. Shortly after becoming Chancellor of the Republic, Palpatine had gained knowledge about these invaders and kept a close tab on them, recognizing the Yuzang Bong as a future enemy that could prove to be quite formidable. He kept his knowledge of these extra-galactic invaders a secret. But after the Clone Wars ended, one of his main justifications for continuing to increase the size of the military was a potential extra-galactic invasion. This, of course, was not enough of an explanation for the rest of the galaxy, and frankly, a lot of people didn't even believe him. And of course, as the growth of the Imperial military created more and more hardships for the average citizen, the Galactic Civil War eventually erupted between the Empire and the Rebel Alliance. While this was occurring, further out in the unknown region, another faction known as the Chiss Ascendancy was facing daily skirmishes with these extra-galactic invaders. This is one of the primary reasons why the Chiss commander Thrawn eventually gave his services to the Empire. He too realized just how great a threat the Yuzang Vong were, and he also realized that the Galactic Empire was the only faction strong enough to unify the galaxy and resist them. So, was Thrawn right? Well, that's a trick question. Thrawn is always right, but seriously, had Palpatine's empire stayed in power, would the galaxy have fared better against the Yuzang Vong? Now, most of you know that the Yuzang Vong had a fearsome warrior culture. As a species, these aliens worship pain and suffering, and their bodies were adorned with scars caused by battles and self-mutilation. The Yuzang Vong warriors embraced death and glorious combat, and the only thing they were afraid of was dishonoring themselves. But that didn't mean the overall Yuzang Vong faction was just full of a bunch of brutish and simple-minded individuals. In the Yuzang Vong society, the warrior caste and the shaper caste were amongst the most important, but a lesser caste known as the intendant caste did most of the day-to-day -day governing for the empire. These intendants were mostly bureaucrats, organizers, and logistical managers, but they also served as spies for the Yuzang Vong. This is something that the average warrior caste member saw as beneath their station. One of these intended cast spies was a man named Nam Anor. He was far more open-minded than other members of his species, and he was quickly able to adapt and understand how the Star Wars galaxy functioned, including its very complicated political system. Now, after the fall of the Galactic Empire, the galaxy fell into chaos. The New Republic had managed to retain a good portion of former Imperial space, but there were still several pockets of independent factions that decided not to join up with the New Republic. This included the Legends Imperial Remnants in the Outer Rim, the Hapes Consortium in the Inner Rim, the Chiss Ascendancy in the Unknown Region, Hut Space, of course, and the C. Ruvi Imperium. Naminor and his attendants tried to create as much unrest as possible within these factions, and they also tried to weaken the relationships between these factions by supporting non-interventionist and isolationist candidates. They even carried out assassination attempts against leaders they deemed as a threat. On top of that, they planted the seeds for an organization known as the Peace Brigade, which was made up of citizens of the Star Wars galaxy who supported peace with the Yuzang Vong and actually spied and fought against the New Republic. Using all of this information and knowledge gathered by the scouts, the Yuzang Vong eventually chose the Helska system as their launching point for their invasion. Located in the northern quadrant of the Outer Rim, it was a pretty unremarkable part of the galaxy, but it was chosen strategically by the Vong because it was an area of contested space on the border of the Imperial Remnant and the New Republic. 
Although the Imperial Remnant's leader, Grand Admiral Pelion, quickly realized what a great threat the Yuzang Vong was to the galaxy, many hardliners in his own government were still suspicious of the New Republic's intentions and against allying themselves with their dreaded enemy. In the earlier days of this war, a lot of factions grossly underestimated the size of the Yuzang Vong fleet and the threat they posed against the entire galaxy. And so the Yuzang Vong would use this sensitive area to establish a foothold on the galaxy and more importantly, only attack New Republic worlds and avoid Imperial territory. By doing this, the western flank of the Yuzang Vong invasion would be guarded from attack as long as the Imperial remnants remain neutral. Although the Yuzang Vong fleet was large and formidable, they were still outnumbered by the many factions in the Star Wars galaxy. So the Yuzang Vong knew they had to strike quick. So instead of taking a conservative approach and consolidating their forces in the Outer Rim, they led an assault directly towards the heart of the galaxy. They believed that they took Coruscant and the rest of the galaxy would follow soon after. The problem with such a strategy was that the Yuzang Vong only had enough forces to create a very narrow attack corridor. This means that each world they took was still quite vulnerable to attacks from the flanks. But of course, most of these factions were too slow to respond to the Yuzang Vong advance. While some factions like the Imperial Remnant remained neutral and out of the war, the New Republic was desperately trying to stop the front of the advance that was getting closer and closer to Coruscant each day. And eventually, just like how the Nazi Blitzkrieg cut its way past the slow-moving French army and took Paris, the Yuzang Vong eventually reached Coruscant and destroyed the New Republic government. Had Palpatine's Galactic Empire still been in power, there would have been no issue unifying and consolidating all of the resources in the galaxy and turning that against the Yuzang Vong in some kind of massive counterattack. Within hours, all the nearby Imperial fleets would have been called to the Helska system, and within days, a sizable portion of the entire Imperial fleet would be on station to provide backup. The response would have been quick and decisive. There wouldn't have been competing factions, political and bureaucratic roadblocks. Palpatine had complete authority and control over the Imperial military. The New Republic at the time had actually fallen into the same routines that led to the downfall of the Galactic Republic. The chief of state Borsk Fela failed to respond to the invasion and mobilized the New Republic military in a significant way. Always playing a political game, Borsk even blamed those who were trying to raise awareness about the Yuzang Vong as alarmists who were trying to bolster their own political image. When the real scope of the invasion was finally realized, many senators and officials abandoned Coruscant and fled back home to protect their own homes. It's all quite similar to how the New Republic folded in the face of the First Order invasion in canon. Now, in my opinion, the Galactic Empire would have prevented the Yuzang Vong's bold dash towards the inner rim of the galaxy. Facing a stiff resistance from a united galaxy, the Yuzang Vong would have to take the more conservative approach and carefully guard its flanks and supply lines as it expanded towards the rest of the galaxy. This would keep most of the inner rim industrial centers and shipyards of the Empire intact and contain the Yuzang Vong just to the sparsely populated outer rim, preventing a massive loss of life and industrial production. Now that's just overall strategy. Without a doubt, a heavily militarized empire with a dictator in charge would be able to respond a lot more quickly against an extragalactic threat. But what about the actual combat at the tactical level? Well, one of the biggest disadvantages that the Galactic Empire had was that it killed off most of the Jedi in the galaxy. The Jedi were a formidable force, and just like in the Clone Wars, the new Jedi Order would take the fight to the Yuzang Vong. But at least in the earlier years of the war, the Jedi were unable to successfully contain these extragalactic invaders. Mainly because the Yuzang Vong were literally cut off from the Force and the Jedi could not sense them with the Force. On top of that, the Yuzang Vong warriors did not rely on blasters and enjoyed engaging enemy combatants at melee range with acid-spitting staffs that could deflect lightsaber blades and wearing lightsaber-resistant armor. In the opening months of the war, dozens of Jedi fell to the Yuzang Vong, which seriously demoralized the New Republic. The Empire relies far less on Force users, although Palpatine has dabbled time to time with Force-using agents and soldiers. The main focus was creating a large military force that could fight off a variety of different threats. While the average Stormtrooper on the ground would have been just as helpless as the average Republic Trooper in the earlier days of the war, the mighty Imperial Military Industrial Complex would have been better adapted to upgrading the Stormtrooper's armor and weapons to better face this new foe. 
More importantly, the Imperial Navy, which heavily relied on a massive Star Destroyer fleet, would be better suited for the type of exchanges the Yuzhang Vong Navy was used to. The Yuzhang Vong relied on bioengineered ships that were made out of tough coral-like materials. Their ships used miniature black holes called Davin Vassals as both shields and for propulsion. And for offensive measures, they had plasma launching devices, which were incredibly deadly. At the same time, those Davin Basils used for propulsion and shielding could also strip away an enemy fighter's shields. One of the first encounters that the New Republic had with the Yu Zhang Vong was between a small group of Yu Zhang Vong Coral Skipper fighters and a unit known as Kip's Dozen. This was a New Republic squadron led by Jedi Master Kip Darren and his apprentice Miko Regalia. The second these two sides engaged, most of the New Republic ships lost their shields and subsequently were shot down and destroyed. See, one of the major differences between Republic pilots and Imperial pilots is that Republic pilots fly with the knowledge that their shields can absorb some punishment, whereas TIE fighters are always aware that a single shot can take them out. So they are constantly jinking and maneuvering when engaged in a dogfight. So what might be seen as a disadvantage during the Galactic Civil War actually trains the Imperial fighter pilots to be better prepared for the Yu Zhang Vong. It should be noted that the New Republic eventually figured out a way to counter these Davin Basils by extending the field of their inertial compensators around their shield as well. Now, the using Vong threat also explains why Emperor Palpatine would build something as ridiculous and large as a Death Star. This giant mobile death machine makes no sense in a war against rebel insurgents, but on a grand battlefield that spans many sectors and systems against a traditional fleet, the Death Star can be used as a mobile space station in the most remote areas of the galaxy, which might be strategically important but lack the infrastructure to accommodate a large military force. Also, the Death Star's main laser could be very useful against the using Vong's own massive world ships. Then there are the tens of thousands of turbo laser batteries on the Death Star, which makes the station quite a formidable anti-fleet weapon. It's estimated that 365 trillion people, or in metric 500 trillion persons, were killed by the uh, Yuzhang Vong War, making it one of the bloodiest conflicts in Star Wars history. Entire planets were wiped out, entire species were enslaved and genocided. We're not really sure how well Imperial military technology and the lack of Jedi would have affected the galaxy's ability to fight back against the Yuzhang Vong, but the galaxy definitely would have been better prepared for war and more united. But does this justify Palpatine's heavy-handed approach to governance? Well, that's up to you guys to decide in the comment section down below. Also, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification button down below so you don't miss out on the rest of our content. And as usual, thanks for joining us today. If you're watching this, you are Generation Tech.